Hello, what's the matter with you? I am so bored. I asked my uncle what he used to do when he was bored at my age. And what did he say? He didn't answer. Neither did any of his 25 kids. And there's a bit of a despondent mood here this week. We've had a fantastic time with the last three cards in the suit, but now it's all starting to feel a bit stale and boring. One way of learning the cards is to come up with a keyword for each one. I think a good keyword for this card would be... Meh. The Four of Cups is a card of emotional discontent, and that state of mind when we can't even be bothered to get out of bed. What's the point? It's just going to be more of the same. Come on, cheer up, it's the summertime! This has got to be the worst summer on record in the UK. I've forgotten what the sun looks like. Whenever I'm feeling down, I just think about turnips and shoehorns. Thanks. That's made me feel much better. Anyway, this is not an easy video to make. The general wisdom when it comes to content is to try and keep it energetic and engaging. Well, I'm going to have a hard time doing that with this one. Just look at him. He's miserable as sin. And I dread to think what my audience retention is going to look like this week. Whenever I make one of these videos, I feel like I live through the card. So I'm doing everything I can to keep it together and not give up and go to the pub. However, there's always a positive buried in there somewhere. And by golly, we're going to dig it out. Plus, it's just the nature of the tarot. 78 cards, and if they were all cheerful, it wouldn't work, because life just isn't like that. No, we're here for the long haul. Major and minor, good and bad. Besides, God help us when we get to the swords. So kicking off with the Wade Smith card, we've got the classic barrel of laughs image of some bloke looking like he's had more fun waiting for a bus. Arthur Edward Wade says a young man is seated under a tree and contemplates three cups set on the grass before him. An arm issuing from a cloud offers him another cup. So it's been said that the three cups on the ground in front of him represent his past experience. So basically what life has given him so far. Wade goes on to say his expression notwithstanding is one of discontent with his environment. Which is just a posh way of saying that he's got his arse in his hand. Now let's have a look at the fourth cup. You might see a resemblance to the ace of cups at the beginning of the suit. And that's basically what it is. It represents unlimited potential, just as it does on the ace. It serves as a reminder that we're surrounded by infinite possibilities. But sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own heads that we can't see that. Rachel Pollock says, bored by what life has given him, he does not recognise the new opportunities being offered to him by the fourth cup. Moving on to the Thoth card, we've got what look a bit like trophies on this one. Perhaps it's won four rewards for having the most obscure passage in a tarot book. Crowley says, the sea is still shown, but its surface is ruffled, and the four cups which stand upon it are no longer so stable. So I think he's talking about the transition from the third card and its calm image of abundance to what he considered to be a more unsettled concept for the four. The Spores from Marseille have both got four cups on them. Not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to keep this section going. One of the cherubs has returned for the Solar Busker card, although this time he appears to be aiding and abetting Italy's most notorious naked cup thief. Perhaps he's given up on music to pursue a life of crime with nudie burglars. Here is a tarot. Get away. It implies annoyances, tribulations, change of weather. I'm English. That's just the default reality around here. You will be caught in a downpour and you will catch a cold as a result. Again, I'm in the UK. I don't need a tarot card to tell me that that's going to happen. This show is so boring. For the last time, this is a Zoom conference. The hermetic title for the Four of Cups is Lord of Blended Pleasure. Well, aside from Blended Pleasure sounding like a name for a... I'm not sure how I can say this without upsetting the census. A lady's appliance? I remember when they used to call them marital aids. Anyway, the other title for this one is Luxury. Now that's quite interesting. Can too much luxury lead to discontent? Can we lose interest in life when our cups runneth over? I don't think we can really discuss this card without talking about depression. According to the World Health Organization, there's around 280 million people affected by depression worldwide. It's been cited as the single largest contributor to global disability, and research has shown that wealthier countries experience higher rates of depression. Now obviously this is a very complex subject, and there could be many different reasons for this, like higher levels of wealth inequality, or too many expectations put on us thanks to things like Instagram millionaires. However, I do believe that poverty has different definitions depending on which part of the world you're in. People can be below the defined poverty line in one country, but still have access to clean water and healthcare, which isn't the case everywhere in the world. It puts me in mind of two videos I saw recently. The first was from a charity called Operation Christmas Child, where people fill a shoebox with things like toys, school supplies, hygiene items, clothes, and then they get sent to kids in need all over the world. Now, 
you can see these kids going crazy when they get those shoe boxes. It's like the best thing ever. The other was of a poor little lamb who's spending her 16th birthday heartbroken because her parents chose the wrong time to give her a brand new Lexus. Now, when I first saw that video, I was like, what the hell? I'm dragging my ass around in a clapped out 20 year old diesel that smokes like a chimney, you entitled little brat. But she's an extreme example and an easy target. At the end of the day, she's just a kid who's been born into that situation and she's reacting to it. In fact, the same research we talked about earlier also says that children of wealthy parents may have a higher chance of developing mental health conditions like depression and anxiety. So my point is that when you look at those two very different situations, you have to ask yourself, who's the happiest? Does having everything we want make us miserable? It makes you realize that luxury is a two-edged sword. La Mala de Ketch says this card is really loaded. As a matter of fact, it borders on being too much of a good thing. The Four of Cups corresponds to the Cancer Zodiac sign and is ruled by the moon. Looks like we've still got the crabs. I beg your pardon? No, not those kind of crabs. I mean that we're still in Cancer for this one, but now we're also under the influence of the moon. In astrology, the moon represents our inner world, so that can be our emotions, instincts, and the way we respond to situations internally. Cancer can also be quite the emotionally sensitive sign, so when we pair that with the moon, we see these qualities in the extreme. It's been said that Cancer amplifies the emotional aspects of the moon, and that can go either way. In one sense, this coupling can produce an emphasis on caring and emotionally intuitive states. However, this heightened sensitivity can also lead to mood swings and emotional fluctuations, the kind of thing we see on the Wade Smith card. Moon and Cancer celebrities include pop songstress Taylor Swift, internet's boyfriend Keanu Reeves, and you can call him Al, but his real name is Paul Simon. On a quick side note, there's a conspiracy theory that Taylor Swift is in fact an Illuminati clone of Zena LaVey, daughter of Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. Obviously it's nonsense, but I just thought it was funny. And you have to admit, they do look quite similar. The Four of Cups resides in the world of Briar and sits at the fourth sephira of Chesed, on the Pillar of Mercy. So the last three sephirot we looked at make up what's known as the supernal triangle at the top of the tree. This area represents the primary emanations of the Divine Source, and immediately below that lies what we call the Abyss, which separates it from the rest of the tree. Crossing the Abyss is seen as the ultimate stage of spiritual evolution, and it's hidden behind the veil that hangs behind the High Priestess, back at number two in the Major Arcana. Hesed, or Mercy, is the first sephira that we come to below the Abyss. According to Israel Regardi, number four, called Hesed Mercy, begins the second triad of Sephiros, which is the reflection of the supernal triad beyond the Abyss. You could say that the Abyss separates the Divine Mysteries from human understanding, so therefore the lower we move down the tree, the further we get from Divinity and the deeper we travel into the human experience. Alistair Crowley says, here below the abyss, the energy of this element, although ordered, balanced, and for the moment stabilized, has lost the original purity of its conception. The Fire of Cups herb is burdock. As well as making a delicious fizzy beverage, burdock can also be used to help with skin diseases. Good, because I've got this terrible red rash round my mouth. That's ketchup. Oh, right. That'll explain why it tastes like tomatoes. But what does it all mean? The Four of Cups is generally associated with times of emotional discontent and a feeling of being preoccupied by negative things going on in our lives that are preventing us from seeing the bigger picture. Wade says weariness, disgust, aversion, imaginary vexations, as if the wine of this world had caused satiety only. Another wine, as if a fairy gift, is now offered to the wastrel, but he sees no consolation therein. This is also a card of blended pleasure. We know that. We already did the bit about the dildos. Do try and keep up. Anyway, imaginary vexations is an interesting concept. I think there's two ways of looking at that. First of all, there's hypochondria. I think the internet has definitely made that kind of thing more widespread. It's very easy these days to feel a slight pain in your elbow, spend five minutes with Dr. Google, and before you know it, you've given yourself 48 hours to live, and you're making peace with your creator. The other way of looking at it is imagine slights, where we become preoccupied with a trivial remark that we've taken to heart. I can't believe he said that about me! The Strength Guard is a good one to keep in mind at times like that. But in either case, we can become so absorbed by these things that we lose awareness of how lucky we are. Rachel Pollock says the passiveness of cups can sometimes lead to apathy. What we can call the negative imagination makes us look at everything as worthless or boring. 
so just not appreciating the value in anything. The card serves as a reminder to count our blessings and to try and stay open to new possibilities. The Thoth card, with its title of luxury, represents a state of satisfaction and contentment that could lead to complacency and a lack of motivation for further growth. It warns against getting too attached to comfort and material success, as often these things are fleeting. Lomala Duquette says when the card appears in a reading, enjoy the moment, but don't expect it to last forever. People whom you hate will always be near you. Well, I don't know what it could possibly mean. If you do not make an effort to keep them away, they will put you in touch with schemers. I got another email from the Nigerian lottery. It's definitely legit this time. We're going to be millionaires. Oh, good. Maybe I'll be able to afford a Lexus. When the Four of Cups appears upside down, it can mean that we become aware of new opportunities. Wade says reversed, novelty, presage, new instruction, new relations. So getting excited for the future, but also feeling the motivation to keep progressing on a spiritual and emotional level. Rachel Pollack says the reversal takes us out of ourselves and awakens us to the world and its possibilities. New things are offered, new realities, new ideas. In the reverse, this tarot tells you that you will witness a fire. Don't worry, I'm sure the downpour will put it out. So I'm sorry if this video has been a bit of a downer, but life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. However, the good news is that life is sometimes sunshine and rainbows, as we'll be finding out when we get to the Ten of Cups. In the meantime, if you're interested in putting a shoebox together for Operation Christmas Child, I'll put a link in the description. The big takeaway for this card is keeping our hearts open, so we don't miss out on opportunities when they arrive. Mark Twain once said, I was seldom able to see an opportunity until it had ceased to be one. Thank you for making it to the end of another round of Mystical Nonsense here at Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you excitement, enthusiasm, and we hope you'll take the opportunity to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.